Hi, I've clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Monday, September 26th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, uh, we continue to watch Invest 97L here. This is going to be the primary area of concern in the Atlantic for the next week or more. And uh, this continues to organize today, a large area of broad turning that you can kind of see here with a convection that has had no trouble persisting during both daytime and nighttime hours. And this is usually a good sign that there's a deep moisture envelope here and uh, waves that look like this uh, almost always develop. This is a classic signature of a developing wave at this time of the year. We have very healthy outflow coming out the poleward side. And uh, we're in general uh, just about as certain as we can be that this is going to become a tropical storm within the next few days. What we're waiting for right now is uh, for this area of broad turning to consolidate into a more uh, tight looking and faster spinning area of low pressure, more well defined is the term that's used uh, before this can become a tropical storm. That is, uh, seems likely to happen sometime during the next couple of days, perhaps sometime during the day Wednesday, during which the system will be moving into the windward uh, islands uh, near Barbados. And uh, this is taking a pretty southerly track. Uh, so even Trinidad and Tobago may start getting some nasty weather on the south side of this. But to the north of the track, uh, specifically Barbados and some of these other islands in the uh, southern Lesser Antilles, there may be tropical storm force gusts at least, even if this is not officially named Matthew at that point. Uh, that would be the name it gets if it does become a tropical storm here soon. And uh, this is likely to happen as it moves into the Eastern Caribbean, and then even perhaps the north coast of South America is going to have to keep an eye on this. Uh, this is the European model showing the, the initialization, and then by uh, 12Z tomorrow morning, Tuesday, we see the system getting a little bit more well-defined. Uh, Wednesday morning, it's nearing Barbados, and uh, still doesn't look quite like a tropical storm on the European model, but at this point, uh, it may be pretty close. And then it continues to move west here while strengthening slowly. And once it gets to the Eastern Caribbean, it actually takes a west-southwest dive toward the northern coast of South America. And this has been a pretty consistent idea on the European model. The GFS is uh, stronger and farther north with the track. The European, though, has been really consistent on this. And there are other models like the UK Met that show this track as well, a little bit toward the south. And uh, this is a uh, reason for concern for some of these southern Caribbean islands like uh, Curacao, Bonaire, Aruba, and the northern coast of Venezuela here. This is an area that doesn't really see tropical storm threats uh, every year. And uh, so this is going to be a concern perhaps for regions here. Now it's not yet clear whether this will happen. And uh, the timing of this is also suspect. Uh, 12Z Friday, don't take that verbatim as uh, the timing has been flipping back and forth on some of these model runs. And so the exact timing is not yet known as to how fast this is going to race through the Eastern Caribbean before slowing down, which it will eventually do. And then again, the GFS is still to the north, which would largely spare this region. So it's not yet clear, but it's something that areas of northern South America here should keep an eye on and some of those southern Caribbean islands. Uh, the, the problem for this system in the longer term, once it gets to this point, is uh, uh, where it may threaten next. Now, it's in the Caribbean, so it will be threatening somewhere. Uh, the question is where, and it could be a number of places, uh, because we're still talking about a long-range pattern that is somewhat complex, as it often is in the Atlantic. This is the GFS ensemble mean, 500 millibar height. And you can kind of clearly see where the storm is by day six. This is on Sunday morning. And what the GFS does is it brings the storm into the Eastern Caribbean, very quickly strengthens it, and then turns it almost due north into Hispaniola, which would obviously uh, be a very bad track uh, for that island. But uh, it's not yet clear whether this will actually occur. And I'll show you why in a second. But this has been the GFS idea for several runs. And one of the reasons this happens is because there's this trough over the Gulf of Mexico that kind of cuts off. You can kind of see the remnants of a trough on the northern edge of your screen here over the Ohio Valley. This is a trough that begins leaving to the northeast, but it leaves a piece behind in the Gulf. And what that does is it sets the edge of this ridge over the southeastern Atlantic. This is a big high right here. This trough over the Gulf is a low. It sets the edge, and so this comes right through and recurves over Hispaniola and then out into the Atlantic. And this has been a pretty consistent idea on the GFS for the last couple of days. However, not all models agree with this evolution, uh, namely the European right now. This is the European ensemble at the same time, Sunday morning, 500 millibar heights. And uh, where the storm is on the members is somewhere in this oval here. There's actually a substantial difference in forward speed. Like I said, exactly when it's near the north coast of South America on the European is not also clear. Uh, some members still have it here by Sunday morning. Some members have it all the way over here. 
So there's a big forward speed spread, and that may be due to how strong the system gets and how much it interacts with the trade winds uh, in the Central Caribbean. So there's some uncertainty there, and this matters a lot because while the European has the same trough over the Gulf of Mexico, there are a couple things going on. One, this is a little weaker. This high over the Western Atlantic is a little bit stronger. And now, depending on exactly where the storm is, uh, determines where it goes because again there is a break in the ridge here the edge of the ridge is, is here so the system will tend to gain latitude now at this point on the model but if it's back here then it follows the GFS track and kind of moves up into Hispaniola the Bahamas and maybe out into the western Atlantic or somewhere like that if it's closer to due south of Jamaica then it may have a, a path more over Cuba and perhaps into Florida in the longer term and if it's way over here it may have a path into the Gulf of Mexico in the longer term uh, so this is all about where is the storm going to be in six days, and that's normally not a very good forecast. Uh, NHC only makes forecasts out to day five for a reason, and even those are subject to uh, great uncertainty. And this is no exception. In fact, the uncertainty is higher here than average, I think. And do the models still disagree on the exact evolution, especially of this trough in the Gulf of Mexico? A cutoff trough like this six, seven, eight days out... Um, usually that evolution is not perfectly forecast at that range, and there are a couple things that can happen here. If the storm doesn't recurve right away to the north, then if it drifts to, toward the west, what can happen is this trough over the Ohio Valley leaves, this trough over the Gulf will then tend to dig and then eventually move southwest, at which point this ridge can build back in and direct this thing into the Gulf or even the Yucatan in the longer range. So there's a huge variety of solutions that can happen in this area and it's really just not clear uh, which if any of these land areas could be affected directly by uh, 97L once it develops into a storm. Um, so many things are going on and a lot has to do with how strong it gets, where exactly it develops. We're still talking about a pre-genesis situation. In other words, this is not a storm yet. There's a large area of broad turning. Where exactly do you put the center of the storm when it finally forms? Is it here, 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 here. I mean, there's a there's a, a large area, about 200 mile radius, where this could eventually consolidate. That means a lot for exactly where the storm is in the Eastern Caribbean in a few days, and that will of course mean a lot for its track because the timing of when it arrives here influences when it deals with the trough up here and how it interacts with that. So you can see how complicated this gets. We also have the trade winds in the Central Caribbean. Now we talked yesterday about how this is a less unfavorable region than it normally is earlier in the season for a wave like this, and so it will not struggle as much to develop in this region. However, that doesn't mean the trade winds won't have some uh, impact on the evolution of 97. Uh, there is still some acceleration that we can see here today, and if that remains, then there is still going to be the possibility that it, it struggles a little bit to intensify quickly, even if it has become a storm by this point. In addition, if it's near the southern uh, the coast of South America here, uh, there are mountains along the coast of Venezuela and lots of dry air can come up from the south into the storm circulation if it's near the coast. That can delay its development substantially if it actually follows the European track that I showed you here. If it's actually in this position by day four on Friday, then uh, there's potential for it to weaken even here and struggle to intensify this close to land. Um, that's going to be an issue and if it's uh, weaker then it may move a little bit faster and could delay its turn toward the north. Uh, if it's stronger it will move slower and perhaps have a better chance to turn toward the north later uh, due to this trough to the west. So there are a lot of things going on here and uh, all we really know is that this is likely to develop, we're about as confident as we can be that it will, over the southeastern Caribbean and affect the Windward Islands and perhaps Trinidad and Tobago on Wednesday as well. And then uh, moving out into this region, we really don't know anything beyond about Thursday. Uh, we're not even sure yet whether it's really going to affect the southern Caribbean islands and the coast of Venezuela, but we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, this is one of those situations where it's uh, kind of a wait and see for the moment. Uh, not really clear where the long-term future of this system lies. So I'll keep you updated here and stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest updates. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.